What is follicular lymphomatoid papulosis? Lymphomatoid papulosis, also known as LYP, uh, is the second most common subtype of CTCL categorized under the CD30 positive lymphoproliferative disorders. Uh, it's clinically characterized by crops of papules that can mimic pimples, bug bites, or even chicken pox, uh, but then do take several weeks or sometimes months to, re to, to resolve. Uh, and if you do a biopsy, uh, lymphomatoid papulosis lesions show atypical T cells that frequently express CD30. Uh, and that's why it's considered a lymphoproliferative disorder, not a lymphoma, because it itself cannot spread internally. And there's several subtypes of lymphomatoid papulosis. Follicular LYP is when the atypical T cells and the inflammation uh, concentrate around the hair follicle. How is it different from lymphomatoid papulosis? Clinically, follicular lymphomatoid papulosis looks exactly the same as other types. There are actually several other types of lymphomatoid papulosis uh, based on how they look histologically. Type A, type B, type C, type D, type E, and then follicular is referred to as type F. Uh, and they just differ in the way they look under the microscope on the skin biopsy. But clinically, they look very similar. So you can't tell based on the way your bumps look. And perhaps most importantly, it does not have any cl clinical prognostic significance to have uh, the different variants. Uh, patients can often have multiple histologic variants. Uh, and so it's just an interesting phenomenon that we see under the microscope. What does it look like? Lymphomatoid papulosis uh, often looks like small bumps that are generally smaller than a centimeter and can uh, have uh, either smooth pink appearance, but some patients will have scaling or even crusting, scabbing, and ulceration. And that's why it can mimic things like bug bites or chicken pox. Um, they may or may not itch, and they can really show up anywhere, but they're scattered around. Some patients have only one or two at a time. Other patients have hundreds. Furthermore, some patients have them grouped. Uh, sometimes they just collect in a regional location. So it can look quite varied, but the hallmark of lymphomatoid papulosis uh, is self-healing. So all of the bumps will self-resolve uh, within a few weeks, but it can take up to four months, and they sometimes leave a scar when they heal. In terms of follicular lymphomatoid papulosis, uh, it, it does not look clinically different than the other subtypes. It looks identical. The main difference is when you do a skin biopsy of one of the bumps, the atypical T cells are around the hair follicle, and that's what makes it follicular. What are the treatments? Lymphomatoid papulosis is a lymphoproliferative disorder, even though it's categorized under the CTCL umbrella, uh, because these bumps themselves actually do not have a risk of turning into lymphoma or spreading internally into the lymph nodes or blood. And they do go away on their own. So treatment depends on the symptoms for each individual patient. 90% uh, of patients, because they only have a few bumps or the bumps don't bother them and they go away on their own rather quickly, choose not to treat. But for patients who have itching or the bumps are on their face or open and ulcerated and causing symptoms, there are several treatments that one can use to help lesions resolve more quickly, uh, such as topical steroids, um, other topicals that are used when you have a new bump to see whether it goes away more quickly. Uh, other treatments include pills, uh, such as low-dose oral methotrexate. Uh, for younger patients, sometimes we try oral tetracycline antibiotics. Phototherapy is a good option, either UVB or PUVA. Uh, that's good for patients who have generalized lesions um, where it's uh, scattered over larger areas of the body. And then for patients with really severe disease, and there are a few patients who have larger lesions 
uh, sometimes even up to two centimeters, uh, and they can sometimes cause very severe scarring and even get infected. Uh, we do have uh, some stronger things like low-dose radiation therapy, uh, low-dose interferon alpha, and then uh, something called uh, brentuximab vedotin, which is a new monoclonal uh, antibody that's given intravenously uh, that can be used for very severe cases. Lymphomatoid papulosis is a long-term condition that comes and goes, so treatment um, when it's needed can be chronic. What is the prognosis of follicular lymphomatoid papulosis? All of the subtypes of lymphomatoid papulosis, including follicular uh, subtype, have identical prognosis to each other, which is generally excellent. 80% of lymphomatoid papulosis patients will simply have this chronic skin condition and no other uh, no other implications with regards to their health. 20% of patients, the lymphomatoid papulosis is a marker that they could be at higher risk for developing a second issue with their T cells. Uh, and 20% of patients can develop Another CTCL, such as mycosis fungoides, which presents as patches that can mimic eczema or psoriasis. Uh, others can develop more nodular lesions, something called primary cutaneous anaplastic large cell lymphoma, which is a close cousin of lymphomatoid papulosis, but an actual lymphoma. And then others can develop an issue with internal T cell lymphoma or other lymphomas, such as Hodgkin's lymphoma. Because of this, lymphomatoid papulosis patients should see their dermatologist regularly or their medical oncologist if that's who their primary care uh, provider is, uh, and just keep track of their symptoms and how they're feeling, uh, and then report back to the doctor if there are any new rashes or any unusual symptoms like fevers, chills, night sweats, unintentional weight loss, severe fatigue, swollen lymph nodes, total body itching, that you cannot explain due to other causes and it persists for more than two weeks. Uh, so that's how we monitor people for lymphomatoid papulosis. But it's important to know lymphomatoid papulosis itself does not need to be treated uh, if there are no symptoms because the treatment does not change that risk of the 20% developing into uh, acquiring another issue. <clears throat> 